We'd be amiss if we did not study the missed approach subject. There are times when in spite of your best efforts to fly a perfect approach using the best radios, you still can't land at your destination. That usually happens because of poor visibility. When this occurs, you must execute a missed approach. Now a missed approach consists of flying a precise series of legs and altitudes to a missed approach point. At that point, the pilot has the option of trying the approach again or proceeding to the alternate destination. The missed approach segment is a key tool to flying instruments safely and must be committed to memory. If you do not see the runway landing environment at the critical deciding moment, you can quickly and easily initiate the published missed approach procedure, maneuvering the aircraft safely away from the ground and any obstacles. The missed approach segment provides a specific flight path and altitude to fly and will return you to a point where you can decide if you're going to try the same approach again or proceed to an alternate airport. But when do you start the missed approach? Well, let's say you make an early decision to fly the missed approach. In this case, you must continue at or above the minimum descent altitude or the decision height until you reach the missed approach point, and then you can execute any turning maneuvers associated with the missed approach. Now, let's say you are circling the land and visual contact is lost. How do you fly the missed approach then? Well, you make an initial climbing turn towards the approach runway and continue the turn until you are established on the missed approach course. Now, aside from not seeing the runway environment, what are some reasons you might decide to execute a missed approach? Well, uh, I think we kind of get wrapped around the axle with the approach issue uh, a bit. Uh, we kind of, as pilots, you know, we shoot the approach, we expect to land. And sure. I think we need to back away from that a little bit. Hmm. You know, we have an old joke where takeoffs are optional, landings are mandatory. <laughs> well, I, I think that, that landings are also optional. You know, there may be a, a condition where you may have to be ready for, for a missed approach, whether it's a VFR or, or IFR. And I think if, if you kind of have the missed approach in mind and, and that the landing is optional, then it won't be a surprise. Outstanding. Uh, if I had an equipment failure, uh, either ground or airborne, uh, I've had that happen on an approach into Reno in a snowstorm where I had to miss the approach because the ground equipment failed. Uh, there is uh, uh, sudden changes of wind. Uh, maybe you're, you, you're, you're flying the airplane and you get a sudden change of pitch, uh, power to maintain speed, which could be an indication of wind shear. Uh, an increase in, in crosswinds outside of your limits uh, are good reasons to miss the approach. So be as prepared as you can be for Pretty much any consequence. Be aware. The main Very thing good. is be aware and maintain your situational awareness. All right. Okay, taking time again for another question. If an early missed approach is initiated before reaching the MAP or missed approach point, the following procedure should be used unless otherwise cleared by ATC. Your answer is A, B, or C, which is correct. The correct answer is a, when an early missed approach is executed, pilots should fly the IAP as specified on the approach plate to the missed approach point at or above the MDA or DH before executing a turning maneuver to ensure terrain obstacle clearance. That answer again is A.